Okay, so we're going to look at vanity Bitcoin addresses and how they are actually generated. Hopefully, it should also give you an, uh, an overview of how Bitcoin addressing works. So here are some vanity addresses here, and we can see that there is a word <coughs> contained with inside the Bitcoin address. This one here was actually created by GP Hubble, Huddle, uh, dot org. If we look at uh, some of them, <coughs> then we can see a word contained with inside the address. Others we'll see are all uppercase, and this one here is a palindrome where uh, the address reads the same forward and backwards. So to understand it, we need to understand how the addresses are actually created. Within Bit the Bitcoin network, as in with most uh, blockchain technologies, we use elliptic curves for our, uh, our, our signing process and to be able to identify uh, users. The way this works is that we use an elliptic curve. So the standard elliptic curve is curve 25125519. That's used in the Tor network and also in uh, Bitcoins. <coughs> With this, we plot our elliptic curve and we take a point on the elliptic curve code G. We then generate a random 256-bit uh, number and that becomes our gradient. That is point, that is N. That's a scalar. <coughs> we then take the point G and we then project up the elliptic curve with a gradient of N until we find P, which is the public key. So that is a pair of uh, points on the curve and the two are linked together by N, the gradient. At the current time, it's too difficult to actually determine the value of N, even though we know the public key and the value of G. So the way that Bitcoin works is that we end up with a Bitcoin address. So the Bitcoin addresses you will typically see with a 1 or a 3 at the start of the address. We start off initially by generating a 256-bit private key, and we can see that uh, there. After this, uh, we create our private key, which is a, a WIF or a wallet interchange format key. That's in a base 58 format. <coughs> and the reason it's base 58 is that we get rid of characters such as a, a, a zero, and an and and uh, an an L a lowercase L because they can be confused for a for a one and uh, a zero. We then create the public key uh, by as we say taking a value of G and then multiplying it by our private key to give us a five hundred and twelve bit public key. After this, we take a hash of it, and then we take the base 58 uh, format, and we end up with our address. So here we have an example uh, of our keys. And we can see that we have our private key, there, the public key, the width, and the, the address. So what we want to do is to be able to look at uh, this as an example. So, <clears throat> we'll see if we can generate an example. Okay, so here we go, private key, public key, the width and the address that we end up in, in the end. Okay, so each time we generate a new private key, it will create a new public key. So remember, we take a point on the elliptic curve, and then we take our private value, private key, and we project it up, and that gives us our public key. So when we look at the, 
the blockchain network we actually see these these IDs whenever there's a payment so in this case this ID is paying these two IDs this amount of uh, bitcoins so let's look at how we could create a sequence of characters to be able to uh, uh, create a vanity ID for our Bitcoin address. So in this case, we'll use a, a Python and we'll create initially a private key. Then we'll pass that private key into a function that we've created. And then we'll go around the function until we produce a public key which contains the letters uh, that we want to search for. So in this case, we go around each time and we add one on to the random value that we've created and we'll create a new private key. We go around this and then we multiply our private key by G as we showed before and we'll create a public key. We then convert that into an address, uh, which is our base 58 format and we'll print out the first six characters. And because this could go on for a long, long time, in this case, we'll just stop when we get to 99. And if we do, then we'll just assume that we haven't found it yet. If we do find a value that has that sequence, then we'll return the address and also the private key that is associated with it. This is an example here where we're searching for just double A in here and we've searched through all these uh, private keys to give these public keys and when we eventually find it so the private key is this and then that produces a public key of that so we'll just give this a try <coughs> and you should be able to see it okay so we'll search for the sequence AA again this time and we'll see how we get on. So it searched through and it's found in this case a, a here. Search through all these keys to find that. And then this is the private key which relates to that public key uh, address. Uh, we could try for say one key one k at the start. One k. And we see it very quickly finds it with uh, 1k here and where are we here it's, th it's here okay so in, the, in this way we can actually generate our uh, a certain sequence but it's going to take a long time so if we have just one character say we're looking for a k then it probably doesn't take long to find one if we look for two characters we've probably got a 50-50 chance or so to find one. But if we were to look for three characters together, then it's going to, it's unlikely that we'll be able to find it within the 100 searches. We'll just give it a try. And you can see it's tried 100 uh, keys here and it hasn't found it. So we need to use a cluster, uh, a GPU miner to be able to uh, find that. Or we need to switch our computer on for several days or even months or years to be able to find uh, a, a sequence that we're looking for. Okay, so how could we use a, an online miner? Is it possible for us to give a miner a, a task such as searching for a certain sequence for us and for them to mine keys for us? The last thing that we want is for the for the other side, the miner, to actually know what our public and private key is. So we'll have to find a method that allows us to be able to generate uh, a key which will produce a certain address, but for it not to be known what our uh, private key is. And the way we do this is with split vanity address generation. So in this case, Bob has tasked Trent the miner. Trent might have lots of GPUs and a cluster infrastructure which is optimized to be able to uh, generate the, 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 the public and keys. 
So initially, Bob will create his private key and his public key, as we've saw, seen before. That's a 256-bit key, and this is a 512-bit key. He gives the public key to Trent and asks Trent to generate a certain sequence and address for him. So in this case, he says, generate Bob is great for me. Trent then goes and tries lots of private keys, and lots of random keys, just as we did before, and each one will produce a public key for him. He then takes Bob's public key and does a simple addition to uh, this key, uh, the new key he's created, and he takes the hash of that. That then becomes the the output. He'll then look to see if it's got the right sequence in it, and if it hasn't, he'll try another private key and another public key and so on, until he finds one that works. When he does find one that works, he passes back B, uh, the private key and the public key of what he found. But we've got to watch now that the miner now has that public and private key. So how do we make sure that no one else can find out Bob's uh, private key for uh, this public key? Well, the way it's done is that uh, the private key will be equal to the secret key, the private key of both Bob and the one that uh, Trent found. And we just add them together and that becomes the private key. And it's the way that elliptic curve actually works. We can actually add uh, together uh, to find the, the result. So Bob's private will be A plus B. No one should know A, even though they know B, then it shouldn't be possible for them to find out Bob's private key. And then he will have a public address of the hash of A plus B, which is the addition of the hash of the public key uh, that Bob created and the public key that Trent created. And it all works. Unfortunately, it's going to take an awful lot of computing power to be able to create uh, large sequences what Trent can do is Trent can actually generate lots of uh, lots of pre-prepared keys that he could then use to be able to check. Okay, so that's outlined vanity Bitcoin addresses and hopefully you've learned a little bit about how Bitcoin addresses are created.